And it's all you, Curran. Awesome. Thank you, Zach. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming and uh, joining me on my third and final uh, quarantine edition webinar. Um, I appreciate it and uh, excited to talk to you guys about some Hawaii tree pests. So, every time the first slide never goes, but first thing I'm going to mention is just that we have um, coverage all over the U.S. I'm pretty sure everyone who I saw in the chat is local Hawaii reps, so you'll be reaching out to me, but if you have any bigger, more specific questions, um, feel free to reach out to um, any of these people listed here. Um, specifically, Jim Spindler at the bottom there, he's a certified professional agronomist. Tomorrow he's going to be doing a webinar on um, turf health and some other things, so um, that might be related to some things you guys are interested in. Definitely check that out. Um, really quickly, Arborjet's background. Um, I'm sure for those of you who have been on my webinars have seen this slide, but for those who haven't, just really quickly, Arborjet was established in 2000, so this year is our 20th anniversary. Um, in 2018, we acquired majority interest in Ecologel and BioPro, which um, holds some of the products I'm going to talk about today, like the Hydrotain, um, the Extra products. Um, we support a broad range of professional markets, and that includes everything from soil to crown. So as you know, we, we do it all. Um, we are committed to environmental responsibility, and we are constantly designing, developing, and manufacturing our own products, as well as the next best thing out there on the market. So diving right in, um, I'm sure you guys have seen or heard or dealt with low rate lack scale. Um, I've recently gotten, uh, I don't know, probably five calls in the last couple of days about this pest and people wondering what to do to treat it. Um, it's pretty um, noticeable with the black city mold that produces on the tops of the tree trunks. So um, it produces this, the honeydew, and then that's what in turn turns into that city mold. So on that right-hand picture, you can kind of see all that black forming on top of the leaf. Um, and so what this does is it decreases the amount of photosynthesis the, the leaves and the plant is able to, to do. And so in time, it breaks down the amount of nutrients that the tree can store in, and then it decreases the canopy. So you get some of that canopy leaf drop because they're covered in this black city mold. Um, it covers a lot of plants. You can see that whole list there and probably even more, but some of the more noticeable trees you can see it on are the ficus and maybe even your hibiscus. Um, the ficus are easy to see because you can see how widespread those branches are and, and the tops of them all look like they were kind of dusted in this black, in that black sooty mold. Um, so to control this pest, we use a product called Imagent um, that is active ingredient is imidacloprid. Um, and now it's kind of that time to start treating for it because you're seeing all of that sooty mold and that buildup. Um, really quickly, this is a tree over in Koalina. Um, the picture on the left, you can see the, it is a darker picture itself, but you can still see the darkness and the amount of sky that you can see through that tree. You can see some of those open spaces. And that's because with the low weight lack scale, you're seeing some of that dieback. There's, there's more sky through the tree because you get that dieback from the low weight lack scale. Whereas after it was treated with Imaget, the picture on the right was taken 14 months later, and you're seeing much fuller growth. You don't see as much sky through the photo, through the trees, maybe a little bit of, of space, but it's all full growth in there. Um, you get that much thicker, fuller canopy. So next pest I'm going to talk about is banyan gall wasp, being a stem gall or tree gall. Um, this is very widespread on Oahu, but also found on Hawaii Island and Maui as well. Um, and it's uh, known 
typically you can see it, the galls, obviously from the name, the stem gall. You can see the picture on the left, bottom left. Um, they form the, the larvae, um, live and grow inside the stem and produce these galls, and then in turn um, allow, don't allow the tree to properly grow. So you get kind of this gray look from far away, as you can see in the top picture. Um, they eventually, obviously, like I said, will cause that branch to die back and the tree itself can die with a large amount. And it's interesting because these banyan trees um, are really difficult to prune and are really difficult to remove and can withstand a hard pruning, but these tiny little insects uh, can be the downfall of these trees. So it's pretty interesting. Um, and I want to compare some photos taken at Punchbowl Cemetery, which I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about quite a bit, but we've done a lot of work there. And um, in 2013, you can see the picture at the top and they were suffering from the banyan galls. You can see that these, some of these trees are gray in comparison to the other ones. Um, and then we did the injection of triage, um, active ingredient emamectin benzoate. Um, and if you're familiar with ArborJet products, we have the triage, the triage G4 and the triage R10. So there are two restricted use and one general use. Um, but we did that type of injection here at Punchbowl Cemetery. And three years later, you can see the difference of these gall free trees. You're not seeing as much of that gray in these trees and they're, they're coming back gall free. Um, this is at Banyan Drive um, on the Hilo side of uh, Big Island. Um, so Banyan Drive is known to have all these obviously very large banyans planted by some pretty famous people. Um, so this tree specifically is the Babe Ruth tree that was planted by Babe Ruth in 1934. Um, and you can see the kind of emptiness, or like I said, I like to note that amount you can see through the, the tree. You can see the sky through the tree. Um, and so this was treated in November of 2017 with that triage. Um, and even just a difference in this picture, you can see the a little bit more fuller growth. Um, but this was just treated in 2017, and I was back there in May of 2019, so almost a, a year ago. And the tree is not looking great, and a lot of these trees on this strip, this banyan drive, are not looking great because they're getting attacked by this banyan gall. And so they definitely need to be treated again, but um, they're so significant. These trees are so important and triage can help with this issue, but actually needs to be treated. So anyone who works over there, we might need to connect and talk about those. Um, next is the Urethrina galwa, um, which took out a majority of the native willy willy tree. Um, Majority of them after were taken out, you could really only find them on the slopes of Maui and the Big Island. Um, they're known to grow in dryland forests. Um, but these little tiny insects, again, um, take hold and um, prevent the tree from properly growing. So you get these um, leaves that can't form properly. And so photosynthesis, again, can't be done properly to get that dye back and the, the tree can't provide for itself its nutritional value that it needs. Um, and so um, to treat this pest, which is not as prevalent now, but it was taking over these willy willy trees and obviously still will unless treated, um, you can treat with the imaget, which like I said, active ingredient is the imidacloprid. Next we have, I'm sure you have heard lots about it, but the infamous coconut rhinoceros beetle. So I'm sure many of you have seen the traps, obviously, that hang from the trees. Um, my fiance actually just yesterday we were out walking and he said, oh, look, bird feeders. And I said, no, those aren't bird feeders. Those are for the 
coconut rhinoceros beetles. So you have UH and the Department of Ag um, out monitoring and checking for these beetles. Um, they host on a range of plants, but obviously most popular, the coconut palm. Um, there are some others there that you can see. Um, and as of right now, they're only on Oahu. I have not heard or seen any research or ev evidence of them on other islands, but for those of you on the other islands, if you have, please let me know. Um, but essentially these giant, as you can see from the picture in the bottom right, they're almost the size of the palm of your hand. They bore into the top of the tree um, and feed on the sap, um, which then in turn can kill the tree. And you can see in that picture how significant their kind of holes and their feeding holes are. Um, and they are controlled with our result. Our research has shown that you can control with acejet and imajet, so that's the acetate and imidacloprid. Um, but the thing about these is because they are so enormous and they eat such a large amount of that live tissue, you need to apply the highest dose of the product in order for them to ingest the highest amount that can kill them. Um, so that's just important to note when you are treating for this, you wanna go with that high dose. That way they ingest that high dose. Um, just some pictures from our research. Um, in 2016, we did some field trials on Iroquois Point um, by Capalina Beach Homes, and there were about 125 palms that we went out and did these injections of Imaget um, and showed good results for the coconut rhinoceros beetle. And as I go along here, I'll just mention this now. Um, I didn't include all of our kind of research data and um, pest sheets and things like that in this presentation, but definitely feel free to reach out to me and I have um, kind of all the research from our entomologist, um, Dr. Don Grossman. He has all that information and, and work he's also done with Dr. Chang from University of Hawaii. Um, so feel free to reach out to me and I can get you guys that kind of more scientific data on this stuff that I did not include in the presentation. Um, next is your monkey pod caterpillar. Um, so obviously known to host and feed on the monkey pod trees. Um, and so far seen on the major islands here, um, but the uh, caterpillar feeds at night. And obviously, as you can see in the picture on the right, complete the foliation of the tree um, and even death. But um, triage, the MMX and benzoate, like I said, and ACE set uh, are both um, effective in treating any leaf feeding caterpillar. Um, ACET, if I haven't mentioned before, is our 911 knockdown product. So, kind of use it and knock down that initial amount, and then you follow with the, the triage or your MMX and benzoate for that full two year um, coverage against the pest. And just some relevant examples this is in Capulani Park. Um, so we did trunk injections of the triage here, and these are all weak differences. So zero is the day of application. We can obviously see that skeletonized tree. Um, just a week later after application, you start to see some of that growth back. And then obviously two, three weeks later. Um, so it's a very quick turnaround and it can re rebound quite quickly, um, but also can be lost quite quickly. Like three weeks prior to this, zero picture top left um the tree is looking fine but the the caterpillar got to it and that's how quickly it can be taken down um this is in the poipu area of Kauai, same kind of deal um three months prior to this picture um uh, full coverage taken down by this caterpillar and then you see this new full growth after treatment Rapid Ohia death, or rod, or Ohia wilt. Um, so initially, this was just found on the Big Island, but now we have it on Oahu, Maui, Kauai. Um, and it attacks the most abundant native tree in the state of Hawaii, the Ohia tree. Um, so initially, the crowns of affected trees will turn yellowish and then brown very quickly within days to weeks. And the dead leaves will typically remain on the tree. 
So you can see in this top picture, all that dead tree mass. Um, and then within the tree, you can tell that the Rapidohia death is there because of the dark staining that's found in the uh, xylem of the tree. So you can see in that bottom right picture. Um, so that's when you, you cut the trunk, you can tell. But um, we found that propozole, um, propiconazole's active ingredient is effective in treating this um, and also preventing this. Um, and we did some big results, big trials um, on Saddle Road on the big island. Um, the interesting part about testing for this is that many of the Ohia trees are found out in the forest. You know, you don't typically see them in residential or um, kind of along the streets here. It's, they're typically out in the forest. So sometimes it's a little bit difficult because obviously you're not going to go and treat 500 trees out in the forest for this disease. Um, but that is where the best um, field replications of the trials have been done um, and has been very effective. Skyline whitefly, which is ever present, as you know, on many species, but most popular and probably the most frequent phone calls I get are because of the plumeria trees, which obviously are all over Hawaii, um, found on all of our Hawaiian islands. And it's known, you can see it and know it's there because of the honeydew and sooty mold. Um, you can see the picture on the right hand side that shows you kind of a good good picture of it, but starts building up in June and then continues through September. So we're starting to really get into that season of the white fly season. Um, by October, populations start decreasing, um, but we're getting into that time when it's, it's very, very popular. And especially now in the summer, um, when it starts to dry up and we are not in our rainy season anymore, um, you tend to get those weaker trees and those are the kind of trees that the white fly are going to attack. So to treat, you're going to use that Imajet, Imidacloprid. Um, we also suggest the Ace Jet as that knockdown. And another important part that we say too is using Azazol or Azadiraxin, which is a OMRI listed product, um, organic. And the reason this is important is because even when you treat your tree for the styling white fly, great, it's off the tree, but these these insects have no problem hanging out around the tree around it. And there's so much landscape material that they'll just hang out in, maybe your hibiscus right next to your tree or anything, and wait for the tree to be ready for it again. So we say using the azosol on that surrounding landscape material to knock it down on everything um, is really, really beneficial. That way it's not still hanging out and just waiting. Um, and like I mentioned too, the drought stress during this time um, it's going to attack those trees that are that are stressed. So we have also products, which I'll talk a little bit more later too, when I dive into drought stress stuff. But nutrient or short stops can help with that drought stress management. Um, thrips and then aphids are next. Very similar to how you're going to treat with for the white fly. Um, so you can see the bottom picture, what they look like, very small, but they're feeding and causing these deformities on the plant. Same kind of deal where you're treating the plant itself with the image at or age at maybe, but the azosol can seriously help with that surrounding landscape material. Same for the aphids, same treatment, same deal. Um, aphids, I'm sure many of you are familiar, but they are soft-bodied insects, and they come in a multitude of colors, um, and they do the same type of damage that these thrips and um, white fly can do to the plant. And we're talking same treatment. I've gotten a couple calls about this Pacific beetle cockroach. Um, so the cypress trees that you find typically lining people's backyards or or maybe the Norway pine you see out driving, they do a lot of wind, wind coverage. Um, kind of any of our conifers in our areas tend to sometimes get affected by this um, mimic beetle. It's actually a cockroach, so it's not a beetle. Um, but it causes 
girdling in the tree. So these beetles are chewing on the bark and they're getting into the phloem of the twigs. And over time, it's withering out this tree and causing these brownouts. Um, and you can see it in the tree that you can see this, this is a very drastic, drastic picture of a tree, but you can even see in healthy-ish looking trees, you still see some of that brown stuff. So it is important to get rid of that dead waste that accumulates on the inside of the tree. Um, because that's where they tend to hole up and they make homes inside of that. Um, but you also can treat with that imidacloprid, that um, image, at, um, and the tree will come back. And I'm starting to see more of this. Like, I don't know about you guys, but when I drive, I can see, like, um, especially the Norway pines, they're starting to look thinner, and it's like, what's taking over those guys? Something's happening. Um, and it's this, that, that beetle. Um, the macadamia felted coccid is another pest, um, obviously, by the name, host on the macadamia. Um, has been seen on only big islands so far, but creates that honeydew and sooty mold. Um, you can see in that, in that right picture, um, starting to cause spotting on the older leaves and eventually branch and crown dieback. Um, and it delays the, the nut from dropping. And so we've seen good results with the Azosol, that omnilisted product on this, because it is a fruit or edible plant. We do say to use the Azosol product. Um, it's a non-oil based as a directin. Um, and we have seen very good results with that. My top throw, I'm sure many of you have maybe dealt with or seen. Um, and typically when you see a, a tree dying from this, it seems like, oh, wow, that really happened quickly. But um, usually these trees have been suffering for some time and just now they're kind of, um, kind of look like they're dying, but they've been really fighting these symptoms for a while. Um, and what typically happens is that this tree, any type of root rot or disease that comes from that is um, because the tree is not getting adequate amount of water. It can't absorb the amount of water. And the reason it can't absorb that is because it maybe was getting too much water in the first place. So it's kind of a, a double whammy or kind of interesting. Um, so what the... Um, phosphogen does for this is essentially like a B12 shot for the tree. So we get, you know, B12 shot, the energy for us. Um, that's what the phosphogen does for the tree. Um, that increases the cell, cell wall thickness, increases the plant's ability to defense against these issues, um, and it prevents the development of these spores or this root rot from starting. Um, so let's see what else did I want to say about that. Um, especially now that it's starting to get into this hotter time of year, the, the temperatures are rising. Um, these trees that are affected by this root rot, which you might not be able to see right now, they might be okay. They're not going to be able to absorb the adequate amount of water that they need. And then that's when you're really going to see the tree deteriorating. Um, and these are some examples from Colina. Um, this is a monkey pod that was having some issues with um, its ability to uptake water. Um, <clears throat> it also had to do with obviously the area it was planted. As you know, monkey pods have pretty substantial root systems and um, can have some difficulty in a teeny little medium like this. But this tree was um, treated with the phosphogen, so like I said, got its B12 shot and just a 90-day difference. You can see um, the amount of canopy in the tree. Chlorosis, I'm sure many of you have seen. Um, soils with high pH um, tend to <clears throat> um, lead to nutrient deficiencies, um, and you can see the most popular, obviously, is that yellowing of the leaves that you know it's affected by the chlorosis. Um, we have two products that help with this. Um, so Minjet Iron and Palm Jet. And it should, those products should be applied now 
because it's going to allow, <clears throat> excuse me, allow the tree to green up without burning the foliage. <clears throat> and the reason is, <coughs> excuse me, the reason um, now is a good time is because if you put this product in the tree too early, you're going to get some of that burning on those younger leaves. But if you wait too long and you, you wait too long into the summer, especially now with the Hawaii heat, um, applying it when it's too hot, you might get some burning as well. So you want to help these trees, but obviously it has to be put in the tree at the right time. Um, drought stress, like I said, I was going to talk about this. Um, there are a lot of things that result from drought stress in a tree, but the most popular that you'll see is the yellowing of the leaves. And typically in young or newly transplanted trees, um, you'll see wilting, like in that bottom picture. Um, and then eventually you can see some leaf drops. Um, and this little diagram on the right here is a kind of good um, depiction of mild drought, moderate drought, and severe drought, what happens to the tree. So like I said, those first things that we're talking about is how we would address it here. But you can see as it gets more intense um, what, what can happen to the tree. But to treat these mild drought issues, um, we have a multitude of products that will help. And I know I mentioned before the Nutri, the Hydrogen, and the Shortstop. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure how many of you have heard me talk about this before, but Hydrogen and Nutri both um, allow the tree to access water it could not access before by um, adhering to the roots of that tree and turning the moisture in the air, like you have in the soil um, pocket spaces, into droplets of water that the tree can use. So um, that really helps with trees that aren't getting adequate amount of water or not being able to access any of the water around them. That helps a ton. The nutrient root also helps with that um, um, root growth and it'll help with your um, transplant success. Um, you can reduce watering with these two products. Um, and then the shortstop, <clears throat> which obviously from the name, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a plant growth regulator. And you might be thinking, why would that help with my drought stress? Um, essentially, the plant growth regulator, taking the energy from the top of the tree that it was using to lengthen, um, lengthen its leaves and stems and such, and putting that energy into the roots. So you're getting finer root hair growth. And with that, you're getting a more dense system that allows you to access more water. <clears throat> I'm so sorry about my cough. Um, okay, so salt damage. Um, I'm from the East Coast, so when I think of this, I normally would think of the salt from putting down salt when it when it snows in the winter time, so you don't slip, or you can. Um, usually do that there, but obviously in Hawaii, we don't have that problem. Um, so areas you might run into this would be your high pH soil from your reclaimed water. I know a lot of places use reclaimed water on their system, um, which is okay, but you're adding to that pH of the soil. And so these trees sometimes obviously are negatively affected by that and need a little bit of that salt flush um, to mitigate these issues. Um, so first things first, obviously you want to give the tree good clean water, but if you can't do that, um, you're going to do a salt flush, and essentially what that's doing is replacing the sodium with the calcium, and that would be our NAX product. Um, and I kind of blew through those, <laughs> trying not to bore you guys too much, and there are obviously plenty, plenty more um, pests out there that I'm sure I haven't covered or don't know about yet, um, but just for reference, um, on our website, we just officially created our Hawaii pest sheet, um, so you can get that for your customers or for yourself. Um, as a reminder, this is just a snippet of the first page of it, which is some of the pests I talk about here, um, but that is accessible on our website. Like I said, does not include everything, but some of those bigger ones. And now, I know I blew through that, but I want to open it up for some questions, if there are any. 